So we're freshly back from Super Nintendo World, and we're going to tell you guys all about it, but not before we publicly shame Vernius for almost missing the flight. Okay, so <laughs> listen. Unfortunately, at the moment, I don't have proper identification papers, and that's not even my fault. That's a long story. At the moment, moment. you never had proper no, no, identification. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. From this is never my fault to begin with. Um, long story short, parents lost my SNN card when I was like 10 years old. But besides the point, I bring all my ID with me, I like everything possible, birth certificate, healthcare card, all the things, right? And Burn TSA showed up with his birth certificate, so we could have erased his existence, but we chose <laughs> yeah, not yeah, to. Yeah, you know, just like, poof, right, like tearing in half, ah, like, oh, I'm fading, ah, oh, pixels, dust, ash, nothing. The doors closed at 545, and it was 544, and you were just like walking <laughs> up the yeah. aisle. Oh my god. No, no, it was 545, uh, like it was on the dot. Yeah, it was, it was definitely on, on the, the dot. dot. I am punctual, fashionably on time. Just um, for reference, we're all yeah. sitting in the row talking to us like, Vern's not making this flight. Yeah, Rob's yeah, everyone live was tweeting. so supportive of me. Yeah, yeah, I'm no, like, look at all this leg room this. I yeah, have. Yeah, you can do it. You'll make it in time, said no one at all on the at flight. At that point, I just accepted it. Enough humiliating Vern. Let's talk about what everyone came here for, and that's Super Nintendo World. So uh, the first day we got there, and let me just say that in order to get to Super Nintendo World uh, in uh, Universal Studios Hollywood, you have to go down... Four goddamn <laughs> flights of escalators, and it's it takes the longest like ad- 20 and of minutes. Of course, ever. no one walks down them. <laughs> and then we lost Adam at some point there. We had to wait for Adam. Oh, yeah. And he was like the, the, the cameraman. But when you first walk into the place, like, you have to go through the turnstile, and then it's like this huge warp pipe that's very hush hush, like off to the side. And then you walk through, and then you have all the lights inside the warp pipe, which I would imagine that's what it's like going through a warp pipe. In any Mario game. It was, it was like going into hyperdrive in Star Wars, what it looked like. The fact that it played an actual pipe entering and exiting sound effect when you walked inside of it was the coolest thing ever. It was so immersive. Well, one of the best parts was when you actually walk through the pipe and you end up in, like, the lobby of Peach's Castle. And then you have a bomb battlefield. I really, that's when it starts in. You walk through the warp pipe and then you go into Peach's Castle and then you just walk in and the all the sun and the light emerges and you're just immersed into that world don't look at the sun though because if you look at the sun you like you free fall from the sky you have like a wing cap you get vertigo you don't know what the hell's going on it looks exactly like 3d world i would say specifically much less chaotic well you know well, i don't know about it, that you know? for once we were collaborating in a group effort instead of just trying to get the crown at the end of the level. Wow, I'm so also cool. Also don't know about head. that. Wow. I was instantly looking for a crown. Yeah, we were trying to kill Toad in the in the ride. And uh, the, yeah, you got there's like piranha plants and stuff. Yoshi's walking around. Mario, Luigi, Peach are all there doing their stuff. Meeting Peach, my idol, my pink pre-princess. Oh, that was the best moment. That was my favorite photo I took. She was starstruck too. She was amongst a, a celebrity. She was like, oh my God. Who was Vernus. apparently <laughs> signing things left and right. Vern <laughs> signed a switch at some point. <laughs> uh, that's from a Sky Zone video. We recorded the day before we went there. Yeah, fun times. Freaking up. We went through the Mario Kart ride. Uh, we'll get to, we'll talk about that after for sure. Oh, uh, freaking, there's someone online with a Kirby shirt and they recognized me because of my channel and it's like, wow, that's amazing. I feel amazing. Vern, since you brought up Mario Kart, walk us through the queue, since that was really the first thing we did when we walked into Super Nintendo World. Dude, the queue. Great point, and with pleasure. It was spectacular. The fact that they went so far out just to make the wait for the ride so enjoyable was never something I ever would have expected from any theme park. You walk inside after go starting in the line for the Mario Kart ride, and it's just Yoshi story and island themed decor everywhere. Even the sky is interesting. You got the happy stars, and you got the super happy flowers, and the happy tree, and it's, it's also so happy, man. It's so freaking happy. Everything looks like straight out of a game, like you're actually in the Yoshi, actually in a Yoshi game. And you're going through the caverns, with the crystals everywhere, with those funny star dudes. And you can see elevators that have these locked doors, or well, locked door painted onto them, as if it's actually in the games as well. It's, it's such a cool feeling of immersion. And you're walking down, and you get it transitions more from Yoshi's Story to Yoshi's Island. And then once you're walking up the staircase past it all, you're going into more caverns, and then boop, you're outside in the presence of the big man, Bowser, in Bowser's freaking castle. You're actually in his castle, and Bowser's just right there. I got the pose with, <laughs> with the statue and the photo. Man, that is that is like <laughs> top ten pose I've ever taken in my life. But dude, when you walk in. 
First of all, like Burns said, you get hit in the face with Bowser. He's just there. He literally massive... punches you. He F smashes you <laughs> in the face. Exactly. But you walk into Bowser's castle. He is this massive, awesome statue. He's just there like, waha, take a picture with me. Let's go. But Bowser's castle was sick. It was like a walking Mario, like Super Mario World reference. Everything in there was like the, like the big boss doors. There was paintings that I wanted to jump into. And then you slowly go through the queue and you see like all the Mario Kart trophies and stuff like that. But my favorite stuff was like the making of the bombs, making of the, the little Koopalings, not the Koopalings, the Mecha Koopas. Uh, all that stuff was so cool. It was so many cool Easter eggs. That's canonized a, now, how they make the Mecha Koopa. Exactly. And then there's even the giant Bowser throne where he has a little picture of Peach. And you're just like, oh, this man, he, he's really, he really loves his Peach, doesn't he? But it was really, really cool. Like every single reference and Easter egg in that queue was, it made the queue fun. Which is, I think, important when the line's like an hour and a half long. It, it was cool. And then what, what was after Bowser's Castle? I don't actually remember. Well, you go deeper into the queue and you actually start getting closer to the ride. So you, when you go through the castle and everything is amazing, you can look at each and every way and find a new Easter egg somewhere in that castle. Crazy eights and lucky sevens. Uh, making your, walking your babam. Babams are pits. There's so many books. Dental hygiene for chain chomps, they're all great. All the books are fantastic. Battle mode for beginners, I need that one. Yeah, after the Bowser stuff, it goes into Luigi's Mansion themed decor. A little bit. One thing I actually liked was they, sh as there was one spot where they showed like a bunch of red shells just like ready to go. It was like, oh, this is how they, they load them into the boxes, you know? Casey, tell us about the Mario Kart ride. Um, the ride itself? Or tell us about uh, the room before we go into it. The room before you go into it. I remember walking in to the left, you see Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, not Daisy. <laughs> Not Daisy. And Yoshi. There was a real lack of Daisy presence. Yeah. I mean, even though you had the band, there was just, there was nothing Daisy. But the ride itself was phenomenal. Definitely, yeah, it was a good I ride. think, the best part of the entire park. Especially the whole watch syncing up to it, making a game out of it. Top tier, in my opinion. So you put the visor on. You don't get the items like in traditional Mario Kart, but you get the shells. You use the visor to aim by just looking at where you want to shoot. It's pretty straightforward. You turn to get coins. And every shell is color coded, so depending on where you're sitting, you have a score depending on how many enemies you hit. There's Easter eggs too while you play the game. Like, I think getting the highest score in your cart also got you extra coins. Which that would is... be me. Oh, drifting also. Um, I believe I also it got that, Danny mister. Yeah. I may not be great in the games we actually play, but IRL, apparently that's that's my calling. So I really enjoyed how seamless the AR experience was, the augmented reality Dude, feel of it. I want I want to know. I want to know how they did that because that was very impressive. Like it looks like legit. Yeah, everywhere you looked at, every the aiming with the visor, everywhere you looked in the thing, everyone could have a their own unique experience depending on how they decided to go throughout the ride. Oh, um, I also love the That's fact cool. that surprisingly, there's replay value to this ride. Oh god, the achievements. You, not just yeah. the achievements, that's just a little side thing. You can actually technically go on two different versions of the race because you can go on the left or the right side of the track and there are two different tracks. I didn't even, I didn't know, even know that. Yeah, I, I only went on one side. I think we all went on the same side every time because we're all together. Because left is always right. It went in different paths on both sides. I didn't know that, that's cool. Yeah, so like who knows what was on the other side on the right side. I think we were always on the left one. The ride itself was amazing and just the pacing it goes through. You find yourself having so much fun and then you get to the end and it ramps up as you go through. Yo, hold you up. Say, like, the end of that ride road. is probably like yeah. the greatest end to a Mario game. And they, give, well, they give you a yeah, star on any, Rainbow like, coast It's not really a coaster, but any like animatronic attraction. ride, any attraction I've been on, like the, the final act is great. Freaking, oh, that one moment when you're basically flying, kind of like your simulator flying with the wind blowing in your face. That was so cool. It felt like I was deadly in the air, like in uh, like riding with the glider attached to my car, as if we're doing air tricks and stuff. Yeah, it truly was. You finished it, and you immediately wanted to go back on it. The ride finished, and then I finished. Let's go! How much you get? 
I got 109. 109. 101! We all won. We won, we won the Universal yeah. Cup. We won the Universal Cup, boys. Everyone. We all did it. Every, everybody gloat. We did it. Everybody gloat. We won. We all got 100 coins. And then, of course, once you leave the ride, you exit through the gift shop where I think all of us spent a little too much money. That yes. There's no such thing as a bad investment. You know, investment in happiness, of course. What was everyone's favorite thing they picked up from the store? Oh, well, that's tough. I only picked up one thing. Well, that's got to be your favorite then. I guess so. I, I don't even remember. Never, by default, Casey, yeah. I don't even remember what you bought. I bought about 10 cups. Oh, that's 10 different things. I think everyone got Although cups. I will say the Yoshi cup was my favorite. I've been using the cups every day. They're great. I hope you guys grab me some mugs. Uh, I'm, I grabbed I'm a, a mug. I grabbed a mug for the studio. Uh, it is a Luigi mug. I personally was a little underwhelmed with the merch selection. The stuff that was there was cool. I was just excited expecting some more things and I hope and I'm sure that they're going to be bringing in more things. I really wanted to buy Chef Toad. I regret not buying Chef Toad. I did buy Chef Toad, uh, the plush for my daughter and the statue for my kitchen so he can represent the kitchen. Yeah, that makes sense. I also like How the star Chef? coin block pillow that you got, Rob. Oh yeah, for, you know what? I, that actually I might wanted be my to get favorite that. thing. I completely forgot to get that one. I would have loved that. That thing probably was one of the coolest options. The two-in-one pillow. Okay, my favorite thing. I have like two. The muscle t-shirt with Peach on it and the Yoshi plushie. The ones that I didn't get at Nintendo World though were the ones I won at Sky World because I actually really like the Shy Guy and the, and the blooper I got from there. And then when you leave the gift shop, you know, you have the entire rest of the world that you can explore, which is linked up to an app, by the way, that you have to download, which is connected to your wristband. All right, all right. So basically you get an app, right? And this app is connected to a, not a wristwatch, like a little wristband you get that looks like a watch. All right, we have a Toad in. Bernius. Hooray! Toad wow. for Danny. Blue Toad represents. <laughs> we got Luigi. Luigi. We got Mario Luigi. for Mr. Cameraman. Peach for Casey, because they don't have Rosalina. And Yoshi. No. Casey yelled at them about not having Rosalina. He would never. I got heated. I got kicked out. And uh, basically, as you go doing stuff, you scan the watch, and uh, it syncs up points with, like, if you get a coin block, you get a coin, which adds to your score, which that score is then competing against everybody else in the park. There's different leaderboards. Yeah, there's several different leaderboards. So I was on Team Luigi, so if Team Luigi wins, uh, did, did, we, did we win anything? Or is this no, Luigi wins? I think there are rotating stamps that you can earn. There was probably an achievement if you're character wants something too. I think I think that's what it was. But yeah, it basically just adds a little extra pizzazz. And through this app, you also get like achievements. So you do a whole bunch of stuff. So let's say, for example, you ride the ride a hundred times or being there for launch week. Sorry, if you missed launch week, you know, you can never get that stamp. I'm sorry. Look at us flexing our launch week stamps. <laughs> that, I, that was the entire <laughs> reason to Mario. mention it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> ladies, we're taken. <laughs> Yeah, Mario <laughs> saved us for him. But it was cool. I, I liked the app integration, and it was just basically built into the Universal app. You didn't have to really do anything extra. You're already there, and it's just and we were just so excited that one of us spelled our name wrong, and we're not we're not going to say who it is. We're not going to name names here. But someone spelled their name wrong because they were just too excited. <laughs> Moving on. After you're done with the Mario Kart attraction, you could hang out and do something else, that being Bowser Jr.'s little castle, raid his little cringe-ass nanny baby ranch well, sack. Well, you can't fight Bowser yeah, Jr. until you collect to the Bowser some... Jr. Yeah, you gotta collect keys first. You can't I just... Was, I was getting you, oh, you can't just all willy-nilly show up to yeah. Bowser Jr.'s castle. Uh, so, you go on the theme park and you see his little mini-game attractions you can play. Kind of like the mini-games from 3D World where you essentially do these little challenges and if you complete them, you get keys. You get three keys and you can finally defeat Bowser Jr. who's stolen the precious golden mushroom from the Mushroom Kingdom. It's safe to say that the whole world is like a real world 3D world. Because like all the branding and everything surrounding it, it just, it feels like they brought 3D world to life. Uh, one of the mini games, which was my favorite, was a crank game, where you're trying to make a Goomba um, you're basically outspeeding a Goomba by cranking a crank. You're trying really to murder fast. him. You could you could say it plainly. No, we, no, he just he just uh, tumbled. There you was know? probably just a like grinder a tumble back to there his death. And, no, there's no no no. But the funniest thing about these mini games you can play isn't that they're fun to play. It's that you can lose. 
You can wait online for over an hour with your family, with your friends, with your loved ones, and you attempt the mini game, but you could actually fail the mini game and not get the key. But honestly, good. No, I'm, I'm not, I didn't good. fail. People need to be humbled a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Too many participation trophies out it's there. It's crazy. I like it. I never thought they would go that far. I didn't know it Nintendo would be the ones to Mario, do that at the theme park. Wow, that's hilarious. You, you have to earn the right to kill Bowser Jr. Exactly. That is freaking funny. Like, if you want to go to World 9, like, we all desperately tried to in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, we had to get all the star coins. No, I actually like the, or I love the minigames a lot. I think it was a great way to do a different sort of attraction that is way, obviously, more interactive. I was probably the biggest fan of, uh, there was one that was essentially one of the Mario, or was it the Mario Party minigame or in 3D World? where you had to change all the yellow tiles to blue. That's in 3D World, and yeah. we are not good at it, even in yeah, real life. We're, we're extremely bad at it, did in we, general. Did we even play that one? I thought me and Danny show? did really well at that. Yeah, we me played, and Casey uh, Maybe it was just it. the three of us. Vern, um, you may have no, been there. Wait, Vern, you were there. What yeah. was it? It's when you had to change all it the, was with the, the tiles. The TV oh, the screen. Oh, oh, okay, okay, my the bad. Sky. I was thinking about one game we all didn't play with the Koopa Shell. Yeah, yeah, we had to basically hit the power block in time to hit all the other power blocks. That's the only one we didn't get yeah. to, but to be fair, like just weighing how fun the rest of them were, that one was probably the weakest. Yeah, I think I just think it was one the most challenging, but two probably the most fun because I think the one Bird was just alluding to, the one where the clocks, it just went in, in a certain pattern, so it's like you could easily just sit there and just do it over and over again. This one, it was random, it was fun, it felt challenging, and it felt like an accomplishment when we all got it. Like, it ended and we, we were successful, and we were like, hell yeah, like, I we agree. did this. Like, yes. you felt really accomplished, and you feel, I think, it occurred with all the mini games, but this one in particular is that you didn't just sit on a coaster or a ride and experience it. You were a part of it and you accomplished something, right? And you earned that key. Well, we earned it, think but they uh, did really most well. of us didn't claim it because we weren't fast enough. So <laughs> what we had to do was, because we, we beat the minigame and we didn't scan all of our bands in time. Someone uh, held up the line. The hostess, oh, no. she made us stand off to the side and we were going to just piggyback off off another family completing it. And then we watched family like two failed. families in a row <laughs> fail. It was so sad. I felt no, it so wasn't bad. sad. It Good. was hilarious. No, don't be mean like that. I Come enjoyed on. watching the children cry, cry again. as they failed. So what was everyone's favorite Easter egg or visual or animatronic or just something hmm. to look at in the park? Oh, dude, Yoshi on top of the castle. He never stops. He's at like 70,000 steps and, and counting for the day. Yeah, it's got his Fitbit on. My coolest was actually on the on the queue of the Mario Kart ride. That's true. Where there's a really the cool Easter egg. There's so many Easter eggs in there, but there's one in particular where I think I know what you're gonna mention. One of the portraits. Yep, one of the portraits of Bowser in the castle is signed by Miyamoto. I didn't know about that. Was that the one at the end, remember, like right before yeah. the factory area? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The one where you're just straight up looking like a king. So you mentioned animatronics. I don't know if it was my favorite, but it was definitely the most interesting thing. So, you know, we were all meeting Peach and Mario and Luigi. And I, I'm sure you all noticed, but their faces are kind of like robotic masks that They're move. Horrifying. Like, yeah. like to the people inside the costume. And I was like, wow. FNAF is going to be real soon. This is horrifying. Don't say but that. But also, like, they actually made Peach very expressive. Here we go. Smile. Oh, have you been having a good time? Wow. Look at you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peach. Oh, thank you. Hello! You look very cool! Alrighty! Oh, dokey! Let's take a picture! Three, two, one! One more! One, two, and three! It was cool to witness that kind of technology. It's still terrifying how expressive it was, but neat, and how there was kind of basically a voice box inside 
because it was Peach's voice, not just an actor underneath a mask. I just, I just felt bad for the actor underneath, honestly, because how much, how heavy is that? How much are you carrying? That's gotta be like 50 pounds on like the whole costume. Like, it's gotta be hot as oh, it's like, there, it's a bodybuilder It's like there. Piccolo wearing his weighted shoulder pads. So I what? really enjoyed how throughout the park, there were these little Mario what? symbols and they're interactive with the power bands that you get. And when you would put your power band up to it, it would reveal an eight bit picture of either Mario or Peach, Luigi or Bowser. I didn't yeah, know about this dope. either. What the hell? I love, I yeah. love those. After we found the first one and we found out there were three more, we kind of were on the search for them and finding all four gave us a new achievement. I really enjoyed that. The flagpole. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Rob, what was your favorite Easter egg? I, so I love the Pikmin because it's just, it's so out of place <laughs> because there's nothing there but Mario stuff. And then scattered about, you have just little Pikmin that are like moving giant coins. I, I'm sorry. Can I just say though, I'm good for Pikmin. Amazing for Pikmin. Silly little guys. Good. Are for you both. about to what? slander Pikmin? No. No, 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 I have never considered it. All I'm saying like. is, if you're gonna bring Nintendo references in the Mario theme park, where's Kirby? I'm sorry. Where is he? He might have been there somewhere. How could you not reference Kirby? But you didn't me. see him. How disappointed will you be if he was there and you just missed the Kirby reference? He well, was where there. do you think all the sugar came from that were in the drinks? They had to yeah. grind Kirby up. Yeah, there was no stamp for Kirby, so there's no way they wouldn't actually indicate anything or anything like that. There was like multiple stamps you can get for finding the one Pikmin statue, but no Kirby in to the be Nintendo fair, theme park. To be Pikmin. fair. Miyamoto is the one who's opening these parks, and he's only going to use his properties. Okay, you know what? We put it like that. Okay, properly speaking, whatever terminology you got to use to make sense. Yeah, okay, fine. I guess it makes sense then. Fine. I also really just love the giant animatronic piranha plant. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. He's got some lips on him. He just, he's got like the, the spinning key next to him. He's just yeah. very beautifully done. He, he was a good boy. I wanted to pet him. It was like the big ass giant one and then the normal size piranha plant. He was just like, yeah, I'm here too. Everything was moving. Like nothing was just static. Everything moved. It was all alive. It was great. And then after you play enough mini games, you get three keys. And then there is a very, very short line to get into Bowser Jr.'s castle. Uh, because most people don't know you have to collect three keys. So they were turning people away left and right. Nintendo yes. did not give a shit. They were about to your security guards. Only the elitists went through. The top players. And once you have all three keys, you walk up, you scan your band, it lights up the, the three keys, and then they're like, congratulations, you are among the elite. Please walk through this other amazing queue. And then you walk in, and there's Bowser Jr., with his paintbrush. You make a left, there's a bunch of blocks that you can hit, and then you walk into another room where there's the giant clown car and some other statues. Then afterwards, you eventually get to the mini game, which was probably one of the coolest things that I've ever played in a theme park. So it had to be my favorite thing, honestly, even beyond Mario Kart. It's a mini game and it's shadow based. So you're standing in front of this giant projector of like World 1 1, and your shadow is used to swat away the bombs. You can jump and punch blocks to get power-ups. You can throw fireballs, and then you have to duck to dodge bullet bills. But if you get hit, your shadow shrinks. You have a hitbox. As soon as you walk in that place, you got a hitbox. Our first playthrough of that was generally one of the most fun things I've ever done, to your point, in a theme park. I am 30 years old, and <laughs> I was downright uh, You're actually, oh no, you'll be 31 game. in three days. I'll be 31 by the time this video releases. Everyone oh, yeah. say happy birthday. Well, I turned 22 well. at the theme park. So I, I actually got to meet Mario on my birthday. Oh, so, we're not there know. yet, Vernius. Oh, oh, God, I, I'm, I, I'm I sorry. I'm giving you birthdays. I'm sorry. Ago. Genuinely downright giddy playing the game. It was, I don't know how they pulled it off, how immersed you felt in that mini game. You genuinely, it was the closest thing you could come, I think, to an in real life playing a Mario Party video game or a mini game, right? I don't know if I'm alone in feeling that way, but that's genuinely how I felt. No, it was I really I well done. I said that to everyone when I got up, when we finished, I was like, guys, that felt like we were in Mario Party. It was really well done and I, I wish I could play it again. I hope they add more things things like that as they expand because Japan's getting a whole Donkey Kong expansion so who knows we were there for like 12 hours and then the absolute last thing that we did was we had an 8:30 which was the last possible reservation for the Toadstool Cafe which was the restaurant run by Chef Toad himself he's real <laughs> we met him Thank you. 
We walked in. We were seated by the, the very nice waiters and waitresses. And then we sat down and we ordered the entire menu, or basically most of it, because a couple things they were out of. One of the greatest nights of my life. I think it was just tearing Masuda out of at the time. Well, that was the first time that I've had any kind of boba or bubble Ooh, tea. Was yeah, it bubble tea or was it boba? Is that the same tea. thing? That it's the same, same thing, but you had more of a fruit tea. Yeah, Dude, you so live I, by a kung fu tea. Get, get kung fu tea. It's great. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if I like the tapioca, but I did really enjoy the fruit boba because it was like this mango soda or juice. Yeah, and mango. They had like these little mango stars that were cut out and put in the soda, and then they had these little fruit bowls that just like popped immediately. Yeah. And it was just, it wasn't too sweet. It was actually pretty delicious. I think the Toast Duel Cafe was very well done. Yeah. A lot of times, those things feel very gimmicky and the food tastes cheap or just not well done but I actually it was genuinely a good meal we'll be realistic here put realistic ex with expectations for people it is theme park food you know you're not sitting down in a Michelin star restaurant but as far as theme park food goes it didn't feel too cheap like it actually felt pretty solid I think you got your so I... doesn't have Michelin stars <laughs> he should honestly at least one I genuinely enjoyed the food and I'm tough with food like I understand what a theme park is not the highest quality but this is the highest quality food I've ever had at a theme park. Like, didn't even feel like a theme park kind of deal. That's how amazing the presentation was. Well, let's uh, let's run through what we ate, starting with the appetizers. Yes. We had yes. the... So what I felt was the weakest were the toad-shaped garlic knots. Agreed. Completely agreed. It just didn't really taste much of anything. Like, the littlest hint of garlic, but yeah, I was just eating bread at that point. The bread was also really tough, so I felt like I was ripping it apart like a velociraptor. But the presentation of the piranha plant Caprese salad was was awesome. It was cut to look like a piranha plant. It was just tomato mozzarella. It was nothing fancy. It was just, it was cool that they made it look like a piranha plant, and I was so happy about that. That was probably it for appetizers. Yeah, I don't remember there being many appetizers. Unless you consider the soups the appetizers, too. Yeah, well, first of all, it. the soup took forever to come out. They were like, yeah. I don't know if you got the soup, and I'm like, I promise, here's my receipt. I got the soup. <laughs> Bring out the ceramic toad head, please. <laughs> The, and also, it wasn't really a soup. It felt more like a marinara sauce in terms of consistency. Yeah, Flavorful. I mean, it was tomato soup, but that's basically... Oh, I guess it was on the chunkier side, but... Then. It was all right. It was, it was yeah. okay. Speaking of tomatoes, the... The fire flower spaghetti was quite delicious. The meatballs were not the best I've ever had, but they were still really tasty. As well as the marinara was uh, it had a really good amount of kick to it in terms of heat. It wasn't super duper spicy up. So we were talking to the waiter who has given us some behind the scenes information and the fire flower spaghetti meatballs, it's spicy. It's an arbiata sauce because, you know, fire flower. Oh, arbiata. I've never heard of that spice. Uh, well, no, that's just a, the name of a spicy marinara sauce. Oh. Uh, that's the good stuff. Yeah. And the sauce used to be made with ghost peppers, but people complained and they had to knock it down to red pepper flakes. I, I would have loved the ghost pepper. Yeah. Uh, I would have loved, loved, loved to try it sauce. when it was at the top tier spiciness. <laughs> you have to recreate it ourselves. It was already made with ghost pepper. It wasn't just a suggestion that like, went through like a board meeting or something from other chefs. It was actually a thing they already did, but they already got feedback. Dude, ghost peppers are delicious. Well, if it was ghost peppers, we would have lost Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, I would not have made it back. I would have enjoyed that too, though. <laughs> you gotta drink some of Toad's milk in order to survive. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the there was a variety of burgers and sandwiches. We had the Mario and Luigi burgers. The Mario burger was just like a bacon cheeseburger, nothing crazy. But the Luigi burger. Oh, the my Luigi God. burger Burn, was. Burn, since you and Casey loved the Luigi burger so much, just go to town. Go ahead. Oh, absolutely. No, Casey, you can start. Go ahead. All right. So it was a grilled chicken burger. Nothing special there. But it was drenched in some pesto mayo sauce that was fantastic. It did have Luxurious. a mustache drawn on it Christ. and a little. Luigi hat <laughs> Luigi toothpick hat. in it for a little bit of a, a nice display, but the pesto sauce was great. I couldn't stop eating that pesto. I dipped I dipped so many things in there, dude. I was contemplating dipping a meatball in there even, but I didn't want to contaminate it with the tomato sauce. Vern was it drinking was, it by the end of the night. I, I might as well have at that point. Yeah, it felt amazing. Uh, also, it came with these really nice garlic fries. I can uh, say. I believe they well. were not garlic. What the hell is it? I thought they were. Oh, Parmesan. My bad. No, 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 no. Not Parmesan. Truffle. Truffle fries. Truffle. Because okay. I actually do not like truffles, so. More fries for me, baby. Yeah. It, that pesto was the gift of God's. It, it, God's sweat, if you will. It was just that 
freaking luxurious, wow. silky, flavorful. One of my favorite pestos. God peed sauces. in one of those little cups you get at the doctor's office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wish I could have taken some with me, honestly. If you want to decide between the chicken sandwich or the burger, I say chicken sandwich, 100%. Agreed with a well, chicken. Let's not forget the actual best entree, which was the short rib. That was good. That's my favorite yet. The short rib was very yes. flavorful for what I was expecting, and it was shaped like mustard, like a like toast head as well with the cream dollops in the in the quadrants. That we was a really cute head. touch. I loved that a lot. And if you didn't think we ate enough, we had to try all the dessert too. So Absolutely. There were three desserts. Uh, there was one that was shaped like a question block, which was tiramisu. They were out of that one, which is fine because tiramisu just tastes like diarrhea water. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. tiramisu either. I don't mind tiramisu, but I would have loved to try it. So what we ended up ordering was two of the peaches cupcakes and the Mount Bean Pole cake. And I've never seen Casey <laughs> look like a like a, a ravenous wolf eating something. <laughs> than I did when he was eating this cupcake, which was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It was the size of Casey's head, and the minute it landed on the table, he just went to town on it. Like a hyena. That cupcake picking, did not like, stand a chance. Well, to be fair, that cupcake had so much depth, it was like a... It was like a fighting game. <laughs> it was a heavy game. That cupcake. was the real final and boss of the theme park. That raspberry, uh, raspberry uh, filling was a Oh, I didn't box. even know there was filling yeah, in it. Yeah, like we had to eat into that to even realize that was a thing. What a game changer that was. Yeah, it was a really good filling. I like that a lot. So let me break down this cupcake. Peaches, break Ciara, down. edible, white chocolate, <laughs> loved yeah. it. Two types of frostings. One a little sweeter than the other one. Loved them both. Confetti flavored cupcake itself. Raspberry filling on the inside. 10 out of 10. What more could you want? Okay, so that, now that you've explained the luxuriousness that was the cupcake of Princess Peach, I gotta talk about the Mount B. Cold Cake. It was so good, I had to get my own afterwards because we, we all split a bunch of the menu so we could all have an equal portion, but I had to get one of my own. That's how good it was. Hey, imagine a Neapolitan layered cream cake but with matcha on top. So you have matcha, vanilla, Was it matcha or was it just green No, it was matcha. It was, it was matcha for sure. Oh, because I don't really care for matcha, but I really enjoyed I the Mount Bean Pole Cake because I don't like my dessert too sweet, and that's why I liked it. I mean, the cupcake was fantastic, but big sugar coma after that one. <laughs> the Mount Bean Pole Cake is definitely more subtle. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't heavy or anything. It still felt like you were eating quite a bit because of all that, all the layers and the depth of the cake and the cream. The, the coolest thing potentially was the fact that it looks like a legitimate Mario level. It's like you're eating the first level of a Mario 3D land. That's what I immediately thought of when I first saw it. It has a little decoration with the Mario, with the star coin that's also made of white chocolate and the little Mario Mario flag topper, which I kept when I got my own. I don't know where it is right now, but I, it's definitely here somewhere. I mean, the only thing it needed was just me with a crown at the end. And honestly, the food was not that expensive. Yeah. I mean, between surprisingly, yeah, ordering everything, multiple, we had multiple cupcakes. There were a couple different burgers on the table. You know, we got two orders of garlic knots. We got the spaghetti and meatballs. We got the star fruit drinks, the mango drinks. And for feeding, I don't know, what was it, seven of us? We only spent about 150 bucks. So it came out to like, I don't know, 25 a person or something like that. Yes, That's surprisingly, bad. very affordable. Aesthetically, they hit everything out of the park. I think that overall, just amazing on the visuals and how they were able to bring like the fictional world. Yeah, to life even like the chairs and the every table aspect. Yeah, it's like even the smallest, tiniest little details that most people wouldn't even notice, and they put time and effort to make it all right, so you felt like you were in the world. So just kudos to all those people involved. And that was only the first day. We came back the second day, which we didn't even know was going to happen because we got in because we we were guaranteed entry the first day because we had express passes. The second day was a bit of a gamble, but uh, my friend ended up getting a VIP ticket to the Mario Kart ride because it broke down like while he was waiting in line. So we were able to just get right in. And the second day was great because we got to take all pictures and do things that we weren't able to do the first day because we were running around filming. It felt very poetic because we ended going to Super Nintendo World with meeting Mario and Luigi, who were late, by the way. Late to their own party. Indeed, they, they were. They were late for Vern's party for his birthday. I almost oh, cried a little. 
but it was okay because we took amazing photos with them. It was incredible, honestly. I, I said it the moment we got on the flight. I'm gonna meet Mario on my birthday, and I did. Mm. Right. That's how you turn 22. That's how everyone should turn 22. Overall, I think I've already expressed, I think that the world itself was visually stunning and amazing and how it felt so immersive in both the rides and just walking around and just the visuals. One big note, notable lack of blue toad. We should get that <laughs> fixed. I'm going to write a strongly worded email. That might be my only knock though. I really enjoyed the mini games, the rides, everything about it. The competitiveness with the power of bands. It was great. I look forward to going back to there or you Universal in Florida, I think it was a really good time, especially with friends. So I couldn't stay the whole time for personal reasons, so I got to go back and get the food. But other than that, had a great time. Definitely want to go back and just kind of do the ride again. The ride was sick. The vibe was my childhood come to life. It brought out some a childlike wonder in me that I didn't know was still there. So that was awesome. And uh, yeah, dude, it was it was, it was it was a great time. No specific thing to mention. It was just overall really awesome, and it was good to do with the boys too. Uh, I will say. I really enjoy the mini games. Uh, I do wish they had more options character wise for the power bands, but I think that's a small negative on my side. Yeah, if only there was like, I don't know, some giant ape that they could have had a power band for. That would have been great. Or not Rosalina. To name any, not to name any characters in particular. Cool or Triforce bands. But like I said, still early. There's definitely time for them to add that. But it was a great experience. Lots of fun with the mini games. Great food at the restaurant. Very immersive experience altogether. Would definitely go back. If you enjoy Mario, then you owe it to yourself to go to this theme park at least once. It was an experience to say the least. The moment when you walk through the warp pipe and enter through Peach's castle into the theme park, it's it's a magical feeling. Like Tom was saying, childhood whimsy was flowing through my veins. On my mouth, my jaw was on the floor, figuratively and almost literally, with how beautiful and realistic it was to actually a Mario game. Everything was fun to do. Waiting in line was an attraction for the Mario Kart ride. That is something I've never seen any theme park or any kind of attraction do. They made waiting on a line for an hour fun. That is an insanely huge thing to say for any kind of attraction or theme park. And with all the Mario stuff, it was all just incredible. The food, the rides, the atmosphere, the decor. It, it, it was great. I would absolutely go again if I had the opportunity to do so in the future. I didn't have crazy high expectations because I was like, oh, there's only one ride. You know, what really else is there to do? But it is fun, you know, for the whole family or if you're a grown ass man like myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find a lot of fun things to do, and you can actually spend a decent amount of time there. And the waiting's not so bad if you go on a day that's, you know, not President's Day like we went. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like I said, solid theme park food. The ride was awesome. Mini games are cool. I love the animatronic, Piranha Plant. You know, they're playing music from various games. You walk into the bathroom, and they're playing music from water levels. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah, I remember they that. thought of everything. But big recommend if you have the opportunity to go and you have the money, because it is expensive. It is not like, you know, just go, like going to see a movie or anything. If you have the opportunity, I would definitely say try to get there at least once, if, especially if you're a fan of the games or you just like cool theme park stuff. But that's all we got. Make sure to subscribe and we'll be dropping a lot more shorts and, and content sprinkled out the coming weeks. Also, go check out my channel and we will see you next time. Hey, Toad, should you subscribe to everyone on SideQuest? I think he agrees.